Okay, I think it's on. Okay, so I'm going to uh, test this cantilever beam. You know what a cantilever beam is? Mm -hmm. Cantilever beam supported on one end, free at the other end. Okay, so uh, you know what a strain gauge is? Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, like a little thin film that's made up of wires. So uh, when that strain gauge is subjected to tension, the strain gauge wires will get skinnier. And the strain gauge is actually a resistor on the Wheatstone Bridge. Did you watch that video on the Wheatstone Bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as those wires get skinnier, the resistance will increase. So a strain gauge and tension, uh, the resistance of that strain gauge increases. Now in compression, there's a compression gauge on the bottom. When the strain gauge is in compression, the wires get thicker, therefore the resistance goes down. Uh, all right. Yes, sir. Okay, so give me a little space here so everyone can see. It's to spread out a little bit here. All right. Okay, so there's three different loading scenarios that I'm going to do here. Uh, the first loading case, how long is this beam? Do you remember from the directions? 25, yep, but I measured it uh, I measured it before you got here, it is 25 inches long. From the support to the end, that's 25 inches. Okay, so for the first loading scenario, uh, where am I supposed to put the 4.125 pound chunk of steel? Uh, 20 inches off the... Uh, 20 inches from the center of the strain gauge, I believe that's what it was. Yeah. Okay, there is a diagram in this worksheet, if you saw. Uh, it's on the fourth page. I'm supposed to put the rock, this is the rock, 4.125 pounds, 20 inches from the center of the strain gauge. So where my finger is, that's the centroid of the strain gauge, 20 inches out. Uh, someone already drew a line there, so I could measure it, but uh, I already know that the line is 20 inches, so why bother measuring it again? Okay, so I'm going to put it here, but before I even do that, before I even do that, I have to take a strain reading with no load on it. You see, there's a Wheatstone Bridge that's built into this box. If you watched my video on Wheatstone Bridges, and if you looked at all that material I posted in Canvas, there's a Wheatstone Bridge that's actually built into this thing. Okay, so right now I've got the tension gauge plugged in. You see, coming out the top, I've got a red and a white wire. They become red and black. You see the, the red and the black wires plugged into the front there? Okay, so that would be branch number three on the Wheatstone Bridge. Uh, this is just a dummy gauge, completes the circuit, and uh, uh, mathematically it's a temperature compensation device if uh, this were to be done in a harsh environment. Uh, we would want a temperature compensation device. So I've got the tension gauge plugged in right now. Uh, I need a datum reading. Right now I'm going to take a datum reading. So I take the datum reading. Okay, right now the tension gauge is plugged in. So I have to turn it on first. So here's the on switch. I move that to the right and that turns it on. Uh, there's a little black needle in there that moves up and down. I can move it up and down with this knob along the side here. So I want to move that little black needle so that it's in the middle. And uh, actually, this is a calibration knob, so let me fix this. I'm looking for a good reading here. I'll get there eventually. Okay, there it is, okay. Okay, see the little see the little black needle moving up and down? So I want that to be in the middle. If it's in the middle, I now have a datum reading. Uh, right there in the little window there, the strain measurement window. Uh, do we approximate up or down? Uh, well, I, it's, it says 0 to 0 5, it's between 0 and 10. So the datum reading, in this case, would be uh, 0205. Can you write that down as the datum? Okay, now I'm going to put a load on there. I'll put this load of 4.125 pounds. I'm going to put that 20 inches from the support, or actually from the centroid of the strain gauge. Uh, normally I'd have the students do this, but uh, I guess we're not supposed to be sharing. Uh, we're not supposed to be sharing stuff that we're touching. Okay, so. Now the little black needle has moved, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. So now I have to readjust this so that the little black needle is in the middle again. So I do that by turning the strain measurement wheel. And I get the little black needle in the middle. And there's a new number in the front there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. What does that say? 0400? Zero, zero, zero? Yeah. 
So that'll be with load. Okay, now I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to go back to the data. The datum is, uh, what was it, 0195? Uh, no. 0, 2, 0. Okay, now it, it adjusted a little bit. So now the new datum, 0, 0195. So, so where's the distributed load? Well, that'd be this thing right here. This is a distributed load. So I'm gonna put that on here, flush with the end. Okay, how does that look? It's very light, so I'm not expecting a, I'm not expecting a, really drastic movement of the little black strain indicator needle in there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this knob and center the needle and get a new reading. So the new reading is, uh, I'm reading this from the window, 0240 zero uh, for the tension gauge. I'm going to have both of them. I'm going to have the distributed load and I'm going to have the point load at the same time. So you see the distributed load is already on there. But first, uh, for loading case number three, what is my data? Um, It'll be the same as it was for, for, for this test, because all I'm going to do is put the rock on it. Okay, okay now let me readjust this. Uh, oh, let me get one in here. 0445. How do I switch it up? So the tension wires, uh, white and red became white and black. Uh, what color are the compression wires? Green and black, they become green and white here. So uh, let me adjust this. I'm going to unplug the tension wires. And I'll plug in the compression wires. See, these are the compression wires, they're coming out the bottom. The bottom of this is in compression. Are you taking the 301 class now? Or have you finished it? It's already finished. Oh, okay. And I'm going to write this down. Compression gauge, datum, it says here on the front, 4740. So make that the datum, 4740. Okay, now I'm going to put the load on there. I'm going to put the load on here. Uh, like so. Okay, you see that? I put the load on there at 20 inches. 20 inches from the centroid of the strain gauge. Now I have to put that little black needle back in the middle. I'll do that by rotating the knob here on the side. And I'm getting a 4550. Okay, so uh, there's no easy way to, to do this without getting a new datum. Okay, so I have to get a new datum reading. It's probably different than it was a moment ago. Is it important in strain to like keep some sort of like uh, uh, like negative value or positive, like to indicate strain or tension? Uh, or, or just normally, I would consider compression to be negative because it's getting shorter. Right. So, does the math on that work out now that you have? Yes. Yeah, well, it's because the way that it's set up, it's like uh, yeah, it actually is backwards the way it's yeah, set up. Yeah. yeah. So I. Yeah. The magnitude I don't care so much about, just so you know which direction you're right, going okay. in, whether it's compression or tension, but it does look like it's scrambled with regards to the signs. So taking a strain reading here, a uh, datum reading, I mean. Okay, the datum 4730. Uh, this is the distributed load, isn't it? So I'll put the load on there, like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a new strain reading. Uh, I'm getting 4690, and now for the very last act here, I'm going to put this at 20 inches, this rock, and I'm going to measure it. 20 inches, eh, good enough for government work. Eh, maybe I can move over a little bit. It's 20 inches, eh, move it over a little bit. 20 inches, they yeah, move it over a little bit. Yeah. Think of being too picky here. Uh, we're not sending this data to NASA. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, now I'm gonna take a final reading. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I'll say 4,500. 